Hello, Akula fans. This is Charlie with the Gossiker Applications team on the West Coast. And today's class is on how to see three dimensional graphics on your OST 2300L blade control. The machine I'm demoing today is a twin spindle single turret Y axis machine. However, these instructions are valid for anything from a two axis turning center all the way up to our twin spindle three turret LT model. The screen you see in front of us is our standard easy op running screen. If this is not what you see when you're in automatic mode, we'll need to turn on easy op. If you're looking at this screen, that means you're operating in the old OSP T200 mode. And the way to switch over is to find F8 display change and then click on easy op on. That'll turn on this screen. The screen is divided into three separate segments. The upper left hand corner is our DRO and distance to go, plus it has all our modal tool and spindle information. The lower section has our program in it, and the upper right hand corner is currently showing us the physical condition of the machine in terms of clamps and unclamps and uh, whether we're checking ID or OD. However, this upper right hand section can have a value change. As soon as I touch this block, my soft keys change and F2 becomes animate display. By clicking on that, now I can see my program and my modal information, but I'll also be able to see a three dimensional graphic of the program as it's running. First, before I can expect to see an accurate result in the display screen, I need to create my tools. So on the right hand side of the screen, you'll find an OSP vertical action key. When that's touched, Easy modeling becomes an option. By touching that, now I have a library of all of the different types of graphics that the machine knows how to create. This particular machine has our collision avoidance software. If your machine does not have it, you'll only see two buttons here, one for blank, which is to define your material, and another for tool. So because we're setting a tool, we want to touch the word tool and then hit F1 new, and it brings up a dialogue block that's allowing us to define exactly what sort of tool we're going to make. The first is the tool category, whether it's a lathe tool or a uh, live tool. In this case, we're just going to create a CNMG simple turning tool. So I wanna make sure my, my lathe tool category is selected. Then the tool type, as you scroll through, you'll see all of the different generic graphics that Akuma already knows how to create. So a single OD turning tool is what we're looking for. We want to highlight that, touch the word OK, and it opens up a graphic dialog where we are just going to answer some questions about what the shape and configuration of this tool. The first is the tool direction, which will almost always be right-handed, but in the off chance that we're making a left-handed tool, I have that option as well. The next block is for the tool angle. Now, if you're not sure what they're asking, the graphic underneath the input block is showing us precisely what they're asking us. In this case, our A1 is the included angle of the insert. So we'll enter this as a CNMG 80 degree tool. The edge angle or A2, as you can see underneath, is the lead angle. The tool length, L1, is the overall length of the tool. So with a set of calipers, I'll find that you know, this is four and an eighth inch long. The bite width is the shank size. In this case, this is a one inch tool that I'm creating. The D2 dimension is the distance from the backside of the tool to where the insert protrudes. So with a set of calipers, I'll find that value as well. The nose radius of the insert, case we'll use 16 thousandths or 15 six and our tool height is basically asking me is this shank square it's the dimension from the bottom of the tool to where the insert is going to sit on the top so in general this will be the exact same number as your d1 value then your tip height is asking for the thickness of the insert once I've populated all of these values, I can touch the word OK, and a graphic will be generated of the tool I've just created. F5 rotate, and then using the arrow up and down keys will allow me to spin the tool around, make sure that it's exactly what it is that I want. I'm not worried about the orientation in space at this time. All I'm doing is creating a graphic for the machine. 
by clicking on OK, the machine is giving me the opportunity to save this into a library so I don't have to create a new tool every time I want to use a CNMG. So I'll create a tool library file name. Keep in mind that this number, this file name cannot start with a number, but it can have a number in it. So I'll use CNMG as the opening statement and then explain that it's a, oops, it was not, it was a CNMG 1016 previous tool. Once I've entered that, touching the word OK, now stores this tool into the library and it's usable at any time from here on in. Now that I've created a graphic for that tool, F8 Close will turn off the easy modeling software, but I still need to bring the tool into a library registration. And I do that on the key panel by touching the tool data button that has the, the little tool icon on it. Everyone's seen this page before. This is where our offsets are stored. What you don't necessarily know is that in the upper right hand corner, you'll have the second tab for tool data. By touching the tool data tab, it will show me the library of all of the tools that I've registered brought over from the easy modeling. That's the step I'm going to do now. F1 tool register brings up a dialogue block where I'm now going to answer questions about this particular tool. The first field is a registration number. This number does not have anything to do with the physical position of the tool in the turret. It's simply a library number. So we recommend that you make a shop policy of what registration series of numbers belong to specific tools. My favorite procedure is using registration number one through 100 for turning tools. So I'll just enter registration number of one. As a footnote, the registration number is unique. So if you try to utilize a registration number that's been used in the past, the software will tell you, nope, can't do it. Next, we have a tool comment. So I can call this a CNMG roughing tool. The kind of tool can be, uh, the menu can be brought down by hitting F1 select. And we're explaining whether this is a lathe tool, a milling tool, or a probe. In this case, it's a turning tool, we're happy. The edge number will almost always be one unless you're utilizing Y offset turning in which a single turret station may have more than one tool assigned to that station. In this case, we'll keep it simple and we'll just say that the edge number is always going to be one regardless of the turret station. If I do have multiple spindles, I have the opportunity to express whether this is a first spindle, a second spindle, or a tool that's capable of operating on both spindles. This is the this is all of the vital information that I'm going to enter at this time because most of this other information the software will extract automatically once it knows what kind of tool I'm dealing with. So I'll find F6 holder tool select and by clicking on that it opens up a portion of the easy modeling that I used previously and now I can use select tool find the tool that I created in the previous step and click on OK, and my tool becomes populated in the window. Now I am concerned with the way this tool is oriented in space. This is not proper for, this particular orientation is not correct for what I intend to use. So I'm going to change it with F4, change settings. You notice at the bottom, a little dialog block is prompting me to do just that. When I go into change settings, I get to tell the machine whether this tool is mounted in order or in reverse. Now you see that it is oriented in space the way it will be in the machine. In this particular case, it's very difficult to tell whether that insert is on the top of the tool or on the bottom of the tool, but that's simply because currently my uh, display is set to transparent on. So I'm going to click on the word OK, and this block will allow me to turn off my transparency. And now you see, yes, that tool is in exactly the position that uh, it will be in the machine. As a footnote, 
in your change settings on a non-cast machine, you'll also have an option up a little higher than the tool mounting where it's asking which axis we're sticking out. It will be either X minus or Z minus. In this case, obviously we're sticking out in X minus. Once I am satisfied with the way my tool looks and is oriented properly, F7 OK brings me back to the original dialog block. And now you notice that the software has already populated all of the values that it extrapolated from the graphic. I generally will leave the offset number set to zero. We'll see why in just a second. If you're using advanced one touch, it's not a bad idea now to get in here and select the different types of processes that this tool is capable of doing. The reason behind that is when you're using advanced one touch, that software can look at this library when you specify you're going to do a, a certain type of cut. It looks at this block here to tell me whether or not that tool is capable of being used. If you're not using AOT, then this is not a necessary uh, field to populate. At this point, I can click on the word register. It asks me if I really want to do it. Sure, I do. Now, in my library, I have a CNMG tool with all of the information seated right here for it. Now I'm going to go back to my turret info tab, the one you're normally running from. The turret positions are on this side. And currently, I'm looking at the right side of the screen as a detail of the tool that I select on the turret. Because I have nothing on the turret, the detail section is going to remain blank. However, I'm going to arrow over one time and you'll find that F1 becomes a toggle for detail versus unmount. By clicking that, now the right side of the screen has changed. So I am looking at my unmounted tool library. Once I'm looking at that, I have the ability to attach that to the turret by highlighting the tool and finding in my soft keys the word tool turret attach. By clicking on that, it's asking me which position I want to use. In this case, it really is tool number one. So by clicking on OK, now it has attached that tool to the turret. Once again, I'm going to come back to my detail and unmount. So I'm looking at the detail again. Now you can see precisely what I was talking about in terms of what is being displayed on this side normally, the detail of the specific tool. The offset is not showing up in this window because I have one more step in this turret attach, and that's to come over to the offset column and express to the machine what offset I'm using for that tool. Now that I've done that, its offset will show up here. If I have a second offset for that specific tool, I can enter it and both blocks become highlighted. Now that I've done that, I'm gonna go back to my main operating screen and I will be able to see the tool, but I have not defined my material yet. By clicking on the spindle setup tab in the upper corner, I have a dialog block for the blank ID. Right now it's grayed out, so I need to touch F6 or edit parameter, and now these fields become active. If I have defined a blank in the easy op, I could select it, but it's just as easy to populate the dialog box with the dimensions of my material. The outside diameter of my material is in fact four inches, my outside length, four inches as well, and our program zero point. Now, as you see from the dialog block here, Akuma is anticipating having the datum of the material on the left side of the part, whereas my program is set to the right side. So I need to make sure that my program position zero is the same as the uh, overall length of my material. If I want to see a little material being faced off the front, I might make that slightly smaller than my material. Now I know that it will face off 10 thousandths. Now that that is done, I will need to uh, make sure that I have the word clear and draw in the header of my program. The clear will wipe out any graphic that was there previously and draw means bring the material in. Now we're gonna check my material 
by just touching the word material drawing. There it is, looks good. If you don't see the material drawing tab, that's probably because one of the other fields on the easy op screen is selected. By touching the graphic block, I'll get the material drawing tab. In my particular case, I like to uh, look at a, an almost isometric view of the graphic. So I'm going to find angle change. And now by using the arrow keys on my keypad, I can angle the thing around a little bit so that it gives me a little bit better view of what's going on. Back to material drawing, now I can see my part. Now when I, when I touch the cycle start button, I can now see both the tool and the material as it's functioning in the machine. Now, before I physically run the part, I'll probably do this exact process that you see with machine lock turned on so that I can test my program before I ever get into a situation where I might have to hit feed hold or emergency stop in case something is not correct. Thanks for paying attention and hopefully this uh, helps you a little bit in your graphics department.